it's Zia's Caravella from ZK Research, and I'm back for day 11 of the 12 Days of Cloudness, and I am joined by Michael Peachy, the VP of User Experience at Ring Central. Michael, why don't you say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. Hi, Zayas. Yeah. Now, one of the things uh, that you probably noticed that I've been asking everybody is that they know what the corresponding day of Christmas was. So do you remember what my true love gave to me on day 11? Lords of Leaping? It was. I believe it was Lords of Leaping. Uh, might have been Piper's piping. It was one of the two, anyways. Now, um, <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, you are with Ring Central. You guys have been in the news a lot lately. But for those who um, uh, don't know Ring, why don't you just give us a quick background on Ring Central and what you do there? Sure. So, uh, Ring Central provides collaboration tools to organizations of all sizes, from you know small businesses with one or two employees up to big enterprises with tens, hundreds of thousands of people. So we've got uh, contact center products, but the ones that are really interesting here are our telephony and meetings and messaging products that uh, people use to get stuff done at work. Yeah, in fact, we're using Ring Central Video now, and so that's your own platform. Uh, it seems uh, since the pandemic started every week, I see your CEO and Kramer. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's always out there. Now, uh, he was on recently uh, talking about um, uh, a product called Glip, which you guys recently announced, right? So why don't you tell us what Glip is and how it fits into your overall strategy and how it complements this product, which is Ring Central Video. Sure, so the, the Ring Central Video product you're using here is actually our Glip product. And what Glip is, is video messaging or video meetings with the messaging aligned with it. So Zayas, you're talking about how we're on video right now, and that part's true. But just to use this as our use case, prior to this meeting, you and I were messaging back and forth, yeah. setting up times, coordinating an agenda, making sure we were aligned before we come into this meeting. And when we're done, you and I are gonna go back into that messaging to complete the task, the project that we're on. If we do something else, we're gonna come out of messaging, back up into a meeting, back down into messaging, back up into a meeting, sharing files back and forth and doing all that. So that there is the driver of Glip. Glip is Ring Central Video, which is a product we've had for a while, Ring Central Messaging, which we've had for a while, but bringing them together to help business users get stuff done, uh, be successful, do more with less, you know, all the things that people try to do at work. Yeah, and from what I understand, uh, for people who want to try this out, you just announced a premium version of Glip as well, right? Or yeah, Glip absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so Glip Pro is free, and it's also a really unlimited version of, of free. We know that that business users, when they're trying to get stuff done, you know, they need time, and they need to collaborate with a lot of people. 40 minutes is great if your kids are talking to their, to their nana for, uh, for a birthday celebration. Uh, but business people need to get stuff done. So with the Ring Central Glip Pro product, uh, it's it's unlimited and it's free. So meetings run for 24 hours. So you and I could double back on this meeting in six or eight hours if we wanted. We could go for the whole 24. And that ends up being really important for for two use cases. Um, one obviously is, you know, maybe we want to talk for an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, the other that we've seen our customers using is um, this kind of always on meeting, this huddle room or a studio kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so for example, with my design team, we've got, a, I turned it off for this thing so it wouldn't be distracting, but usually on my other monitor, I got a couple, two, three, four of the people I'm collaborating with working along over there. So if I want to jump over and ask them a question or we want to do a quick little huddle, it's right there for us. So you actually just leave this up? Leave it up all day. Huh. That's interesting. And, uh, and we find that really helps with uh, building that emotional and social connection between people who are collaborating at work. Uh, so, you know, we're messaging, but we could also just jump to a video meeting. Uh, we don't have in this Glip Pro product that we've got unlimited and free, there's no message cap. Uh, you know, again, in a, in a consumer world, you know, if there's a cap on how many photos or MP3s you can store in the cloud, that's, that's fine. You can work around that. But in the business world, you don't want to cap that stuff. So you want to keep your meeting recordings and your files and your documents. Uh, and uh, we do 100 people per meeting, so I guess that is a, a little cap, but we're unlimited as far as how many people in your organization can use the messaging and product. Uh, so, you know, bottom line, we're focused on the, the business user there and 
business has got to run without limits. Yeah, now, so since you're in charge of user experience, I wanted to, and you mentioned um, somebody talking to their Nana or kids, you know, doing homework. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, I guess, news around this class of products since the pandemic started. And people seem to equate ease of use with single join. They equate, you know, features with, you know, the ability to put a mustache on you or, you know, have mm -hmm. a start background. And so, and a lot of those are very consumery in nature, right? So how do you think about uh, user experience from a business perspective and not get caught up in all those whiz bang features that maybe look cool, but don't really add to the meeting? Well, we like our whiz bang features too, but I think that, um, the really interesting thing about design and UX at Ring Central is that we've got a really unique challenge here. As the products that we're building, we've got this idea of enterprise grade and consumer class experiences. So, you know, for people who know Ring Central, we started out life as a telephony company. It's PBX in the cloud. Telephony is about the dial tone, and you say as you've got an expectation about your dial tone. When you pick up your phone, you expect there to be a dial tone there. Yeah. Right? Like if, if your phone behaved like your internet connection did or your meeting software did, you'd be furious. So that idea of, of dial tone level quality, dial tone level security and stability, you know, we're a five nine platform. You know, five nines means that between now and 2030, you should expect less than an hour of downtime from our products in a decade. That's yeah. pretty high. So that comes into the enterprise grade of the products that we've got. But then there's that consumer class experience. You know, the stuff just needs to, to work. Um, you know, one click to join a meeting is, is great. It helps kids join a meeting. I'm focused on things like the being able to do a meeting in a browser. You're a sales guy. You've been working for weeks to get the prospect on the phone that you want to close. You got your video meeting all set up. You know, guy's ready to go. He starts struggling with software to join your meeting. You're dead. You know, you're not trying to have a meeting. You're trying to close a deal. So when we do our, our browser experience there, you just send him a URL. He clicks on the URL, types in his name, and he's in the meeting. No software, no fuss. So it's not about one click. It's about helping you do the thing that you're trying to do there. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. And actually, I've used your browser-based version before, and it's very fast. So I was using one of your competitor products, and actually, I tweeted this out. It took 30 seconds for the browser-based client to come up. And so mm -hmm. I was, I was yeah, and then, you know, that's fine if you're in that consumer space, right? Yeah. You know, Nana can wait 30 seconds. Yeah. But again, when you're trying to get things done, all that friction is what drives this fatigue and, and the stress. And we see that in our research. People are tired. People don't want to meet. They want to get stuff done. The meeting, the message is just a way to do that. Yeah. I, I know another... Uh, really interesting pivot for this industry has been the influx of artificial intelligence into these products. And uh, it's funny because um, if you say AI to some people, they get freaked out and they think everything's listening. And, and if you say it to other people, they get really excited about new features. But the, the thing that I've always tried to stress is AI, it can't be so onerous that there's the, the user winds up in the integration point, right? And having to turn features on and things like that. So from a UX perspective, how do you design AI into a product so users can enjoy them without it having it becoming a burden to them. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, as designers, we're focused on the experience of the user. You know, how do you approach a product? How do you engage with it? What can you do with it? What is that experience like? How does that experience make you feel? On the other end of that product, if it's a software product, there's a bunch of tech. And some of that may be traditional tech, some of that may be machine learning or natural language or things that people generally associate with AI. But from where we sit, it's all tech. And if that tech can enhance your experience, then it's valuable to us. So um, call quality and the video quality that we're experiencing now, it feels seamless because you and I are enjoying a relatively face-to-face -face experience here. What we don't see is all of the monitoring and, and activity going on the back end. It's constantly looking at your connection and sampling it, and looking at the quality, upgrading and downgrading your video stream, just a tiny amount, to make sure that your audio is prioritized, even if it means your face slows down. That kind of tech drives the experience, but you shouldn't notice it. Yeah. Right? That's the main thing. What you should notice is a good experience 
you know, it's not the AI in the back end that's driving that. So other AI things, virtual backgrounds, um, being able to go through uh, closed captioning with a natural language and, and extract information out from it. Those should all be things that enhance your experience. And if it's done right, you don't notice it. Yeah. It's valuable. Yeah, I know some of the platforms actually rely on the user having to go change the resolution, right? And so mm -hmm. most users have no clue. And so that's yeah, well, biased. From a, from a UX standpoint, why should I make you think about that? You should be spending your time thinking about the discussion you're having, the sales forecast you're looking at, the employee candidate interview that you're doing. That's what your brain should be focused on, not what's my video resolution. I got a whole cloud full of computers to go worry about your video resolution. They can't help you screen the candidate or close the deal. So let them go do what they do and you do what you do, vision of labor. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's a good point. And uh, I want to pivot the subject a little bit here. Uh, obviously, platforms like this have really become popular because of COVID and people working from anywhere. But there's another aspect to this, and that's uh, on the diversity side. That became another big topic, obviously, in, in, in 2020. Mm -hmm. How does, are people using your tool as a way to try and, or are companies doing that or individuals doing that to try and maybe level the playing field a little bit from, you know, what, from a socioeconomic standpoint? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, I'm, I'm really glad that you asked that because this, this gets at the heart of a lot of what we worry about on, on our UX team. So just to give you context, we've got close to 100 designers, researchers, content writers all over the planet. We've got a very diverse organization at Ring Central and then within the UX team. So that diversity and inclusion is really important to us. This year, we had these kind of two big social experiments that happened. You know, there was, there was a whole focus on, on diversity, inclusion, Black Lives Matter, like raised the discussion on that topic globally, not just in the U.S. And we had this giant COVID, everybody go home and, and work from anywhere experiment. Those two things are really fascinating together because we've seen some really interesting things with, with our customers. So, for example, the playing field changed a little bit when everybody got sent home. We saw and we heard from our customers and we saw in our research that the people, people who were maybe underrepresented in face-to-face -face meetings were able to speak up more in a video conference. When everybody is the same size rectangle, the same size stamp on the screen, it's easier for people's voices to be heard or for people to make them heard. And that's really helped some traditionally disadvantaged classes. As we look forward to this hybrid world, which we'll go back into now that vaccines are here, we're going to get to a place where some people are back in the office and some people are still remote. And this is the next horizon that we're designing for, thinking about from a UX standpoint. How does my video product and my messaging product and that rooms product that's in the conference room, you know, up on the, the big screen TV, how can I use those two products to level the playing field for the people who are remote because they're still taking care of their kids at home? And then that really gets back around into the diversity piece, because if we can level that for everybody, everybody gets to bring their full selves to work, everybody thrives, and an organization thrives when everybody's kind of firing at 100%. So uh, it's a really nice time for that. Yeah, and you actually um, uh, mentioned looking ahead to next year. And so to wrap this up, I've been asking everybody for a prediction. And so tell us something that we should expect in 2021. Uh, well, it's it's uh, it's not going to be 2020. I think that'll be my first prediction. But uh, in our case here, as we look at collaboration, like this bell has been rung. The standards of what people expect and their ability to get stuff done in a business environment isn't going back. Like we're not going back to where February 2020 was. We're going forward to a new place, and I think that. Uh, there'll be new winners and losers in that, and the organizations and the employees and the managers who really think about the tech and how they use tech to collaborate are going to thrive, and, and we're going to see some really exciting growth and change um, in our industry and in the customers that we serve. Well, there you go. From the voice of Michael Peachy, look for some really exciting things and actually uh, probably a shakeup in almost every industry because of it, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. So that brings us to the end of day 11 of uh, 12 Days of Cloudmas. On behalf of Michael PG, VP of User Experience at Ring Central, I'm ZS Caravalla. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much for your time.